Hi, I'm Ayman, and welcome back to one of my auto repair videos. In this video, today I'm going to show you how to remove a condenser on a Honda Insight Generation 2, which applies to 2009 to 2013 models. To access the condenser, you're going to need to remove the radiator, which I showed you how to do in my previous video, so go check that out. Uh, and another thing that you're going to need to do before you remove the condenser is you're going to need to vacuum your system to get rid of the refrigerant inside of it. In our case, we've already done that, so we should be good to go. And we can get right into remove. So what we're looking at is, first off, I wanna mention that I haven't done a condenser removal on this car before. I've done it on a Honda Accord. And my dad has done a removal of the condenser, but that's when he took off the radiator support bar. In this video, I wanna to try to minimize the number of steps that it takes to remove this. So we're gonna to try to keep this on and just try to see what things we, we can remove. So what we think we can remove are these two ports. They're, they're held in by these two bolts, one bolt here and one bolt here. And so these bolts connect to uh, the lines for the AC. And we're going to remove those bolts. And second off, the thing that's actually keeping the condenser in place are seems to be these two bolts. Like there's a little L-shaped bracket, but that L-shaped bracket looks like it can be removed similar to how on the radiator, the radiator had this little L-shaped bracket that could just be popped off. And so what we're going to do is we're going to remove these two bolts and see if we can slide that L-bracket around, which will allow us to move the condenser around. So let's give it a try. If you plan on replacing the condenser, it's very important that you don't get it scratched. It is very easy to scratch the grill. Well, most people are going to be removing the condenser to replace it, so you might not need to worry. But if you do need to replace the condenser, and you only have one person working on the job like I do, then it's good practice to put a piece of foam just to protect it in case it leans backwards. So, first thing that we're going to do is disconnect the lines. And so, this line looks pretty easy to remove. It looks like a 10 millimeter bolt. The one down here seems like it would also be easier to access with a, a spanner. If you use a ratchet wrench, you might get interference with this hose right, uh, with this cable right here. So let's give it a try. I'll try from the bottom first because it's the hardest one. Okay. And so you can see right now, there's already a bit of interference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen it first with the ratchet wrench. And then I'm going to come back with the spanner and loosen it. Okay. Sorry, actually, you can't see it, but you can hear it. Okay. So it might be a bit tight coming out. But it's very important to be deliberate about it. You know what they should invent? They should invent like an electric spanner ratchet. I'm pretty sure they already have those out there, but we don't have one. Oh, but maybe I'll buy that for your birthday. <laughs> Actually, that would be hard to make interchangeable. Oh, looks like I can take it off my hands. Well, it was loose enough for a period, then it got tough again. Okay. So that's what the bolt looks like. As you can see, it's quite long. And before we disconnect the hose, oh, well, we can disconnect the hose right now, but I want to take this one off. Okay, so let's try loosening the top. And this is kind of at an angle. So I'm gonna use this banner. So that's what the bolt looks like. I'm gonna set that aside. Uh, 
That one also had a bigger washer, so if you confuse it with the other one, then just keep in mind that one has a bigger washer than the hose at the bottom. All right, so let's try removing this line. You have to wiggle it a bit. Okay, and there we go. So that's, is it broken here? It looks like this part here was like chopped clean off. I'm not sure if it's supposed to come like that. Actually, I don't think it's supposed to come like that because why would there be a screw there? Huh. So I guess this is broken somehow. I don't think that happened uh, during this job, by the way. I think that was, it was already like that. But you can see that there's an O-ring right here. So you're going to want to hang on to that O-ring. So it looks like we found a possible source of a leak in this system because of this chipped off part for the high pressure line that comes from the compressor. Uh, so it's a good thing that we brute forced this AC replacement system. We got all the way to condenser and we found this part right here that could be broken. And in addition, because it's high pressure, that means it could escape more. We have, uh, we might have to replace this hose. Thankfully, that seems like it's a bit of a, a last minute job. We can replace everything else and then we can replace this hose after. But we don't, we have a replacement O-ring as well, but uh, looks like we have bigger problems here to replace. You know, the reason why it would be a possible source of a leak is because when it's in there, the bolt isn't able to fully tighten it. It's not able to be fully pushed in. And so that might cause it to leak a bit. And the reason that we couldn't see that originally is because this washer that goes on top of it is just so dang huge that it blocked us from seeing this chipped off part. Okay, okay so let's set this aside for now and let's get the bottom hose off. Trying to push it outwards. I want to be careful with this one as well. Let's do some wiggling. Let me try it taking it out of here. I feel like this being in here might restrict us from taking it out, but I'm too afraid to move it. <laughs> okay, so after wiggling it around for a bit, you're able to take it out. You definitely will need to wiggle because it seems like it, has, it provides a very tight seal that we need to break. But now that we have the hoses disconnected, the lines disconnected, we're going to focus our attention on these two bolts, which we'll need the spanner for. This is always a case of righty tighty lefty loosey. Oh, looks like I can do it by hand. Yes, I can. So let me go on this side. And now I'll take them off by hand. All right, it looks like basically it's loose enough for me to just take out. What? All right, so I'm, I gotta be careful. I mean, if it falls, it falls on the splash guard, but I wanna do this in one go. So that's a bolt. outside of the can because it looks like I could get it confused with a different one. Same thing on here. And as you can see, as I'm taking this out, the condenser is getting loose. So we might get to go. Uh, alternatively, uh, if your hands are small enough, you can just reach in and grab the bolt when it comes out. Which, you know, you can do that right now. Let me just make sure that's the right way.
there we go. Those are the bolts. Let's try. Let's try to uh, take off those brackets. First, I'm going to start from this side. So I'm guessing because this is L-shaped, you have to lean it towards the front of the car. Lift this up. And now you can see that it's actually taken off the condenser. But how do we finagle it? We'll have to twist it to this side and lift it up through here. Okay, so I'll just remember that for when we put it back in. So that's what the bracket looks like. Uh, you'll probably want to remember what shape it is because I'm gonna guess these are symmetrical. They, uh, they won't... They're not interchangeable is what I'm trying to say. So let's try on this side. And what I'm worried about now is will it let go once I take this off? So if you have another person, you can ask them to hold it. In our case, we have a foam block. So I'm just gonna reach in and grab that. Or you can take it out of here, I guess. So I just fortunately showed you another way. Think of it as a, a happy little accident. And you can see this one's actually shaped um, let me leave that like that. You can see this shit. Okay, they they are the same one. They, I guess they are interchangeable. They're not symmetrical. So, um, we're gonna set these aside for now. I'll just keep this one on the passenger side. We can compare it later just to check if they are some interchangeable or not. And then we're going to take our attention to the condenser, which right now it looks like we can just lift it out. So we're gonna try that right now. Okay, if you plan on replacing the the condenser, then be very gentle. You don't want it to get scratched. In our case, not important, but just so I can demonstrate being brisk with it. If you feel any snags on it, that is your indication to stop and assess if there's anything wrong. In my case, as soon as I start lifting it, I can feel a bit of resistance coming from where it's slotted at the bottom. I'm gonna guess that's just from the fact that it's been sitting there for a long time. So we're just gonna wiggle it out. Oh, and you hear that, right? There we go. Here's the, the uh, condenser finally taken out. So the way a condenser works is that refrigerant enters through this port. And that refrigerant comes from the compressor where it is compressed into a high pressure warm state. It's a warm gaseous state and it circulates through these thin tubes on the condenser. And as it circulates through the tubes, the fan turns on and it dissipates heat from the refrigerant. These fins on this grill help with dissipation of heat. As it circulates through the condenser, it will end up in the dryer. And the dryer acts sort of like cat litter. It removes the moisture from the refrigerant so that when it cools down and it becomes a liquid, when it exits through this port, it's as pure of a refrigerant as it can be. Of course, there might be oil in there, which is meant to you know, lubri help with lubrication and friction and stuff, but ideally, it's as much, as much refrigerant as possible and not moisture. Uh, and it's kind of interesting that this one is welded here. I'm guessing that this is an aftermarket part because the dryer can get uh, full. You can, you do, you might need to replace the dryer. And on Oscar's car, I think this one's actually separate. So when we replace the condenser, we're actually gonna end up replacing the dryer as well. Okay, so that's the end of this video. I'm Ayman, and today I showed you how to remove the condenser, and I guess the dryer, for a Honda Insight Generation 2. Uh, thanks for watching. This is part of a bigger series on replacing the entire AC system in Noxus's car. So go check out those other videos if you're interested. The next, well, the next thing we're gonna do is replace the compressor, but we've already actually done a video on that one. So if you're interested, go check out that one as well. Uh, that video is not required to remove the condenser, but it makes it easier if you remove the condenser beforehand. All in all, thanks for watching. Please like and comment, subscribe, and look at other videos on i especially the videos in that series I just mentioned and all in other auto repair videos that we do on the Honda Insight Generation 2. And I'll see you there. But for now, I'm Ayman and signing out.